What's up guys, Shane here from Figure 3 d Printing. And today I have a fun project. We're gonna make Tetris for your refrigerator. Let's do it. Welcome back guys. So, I don't know, I just, I got bored one day and I thought what would be cool for my kids to play with on the fridge? You know, we had just gotten like our toys in and things here once we moved. But I was like, you know, what would I would have wanted before I had all that stuff? I had 3D printers, I had plenty of filament. What could I have done? So I decided to make some Tetris blocks and I made quite a bit of Tetris blocks. And it honestly isn't even all of them, which now I'm thinking is probably off camera. This isn't even all of them. These are just, the ones I have here, I have a whole blue set downstairs as well. I wanted to get a couple different colors to be able to kind of just let the kids have something to play with. You know, again, they're going to be using these downstairs on the fridge. So here I have white, red, purple, and yellow. The yellow is Hatchbox. The purple is uh, the Amazon Basics PLA. This red is Ziltec Red PLA. And this white is, I don't know, can't remember. I used a roll from somebody and... I don't remember who it was now, so it doesn't really matter. And the blue was the Strong Hero Blue PLA that I reviewed all previously. These are all previously reviewed, previously used filaments. I just wanted to do something. So I'm going to walk you through real quick how I designed these in Fusion 360, and then I'll show you a little bit more about them. All right, so here we're inside Fusion 360, and you can see I have five parts here plus my original little one right in the middle. So the, the original middle part here, this is what I created first. And you can see my timeline down below. I did a whole lot of stuff. So let's go all the way back to the beginning and see what we had to do. So the very first thing, we're going to enable the very first sketch, which was just a square. That's it. I just picked an arbitrary number. 40 by 40 seemed like a good size to start out with. All right, that's fine. We're going to extrude it up. And we're going to extrude it up 10 millimeters. That all seemed like you know, a pretty good size. I was totally guessing at all this. I had no idea what I was going to do. All right, let's chamfer it. So this is how I got my original shape, just to see, you know, I was like, okay, that looks like a pretty good shape. I like that. We're gonna create another sketch on the bottom. And here, all I did was I used the first sketch as a reference and I just drew construction lines across the middle. So basically you draw a line from uh, one point to another point. And then you can go up here to select tool, you can click on it and hit the X button. That makes it a construction line. So. That's what I did. Let's back out of that because I'm gonna make changes to my sketch. All right, and then we're gonna go ahead and extrude just that little circle, three millimeters, because I'm using three millimeter thick magnets, and this is 8.2. Now, why did I do 8.2? Because I ended up doing eight first, but you also have to think about expansion. So when you put down PLA, it's going down the center of the line. So it's going right here. Well, your line width is a point Four millimeter. That means there's 0.2 on this side of the line and 0.2 on this side of the line. So you have to expand your hole a little bit. This 8.2 is really, really tight. 8.25 would be a little bit looser, but I wanted to be as tight as possible because I do not want new Demi magnets falling out of this. My wife would kill me. So after we did that, again, we went ahead and extruded that up. Come on. Oh, I got out of the sketch. Sorry. Out of the sketch. Here we go. Extrude that up three millimeters, and that gives us our hole for the uh, magnet. So yay! What do we do next? We're gonna start copying and pasting here. So I'm gonna copy, gonna move, copy, move, copy, move, copy, move. Do that a couple times, and look at that. We've got several of these in a row. That's great and all. So now we're gonna go ahead and make this into a component. So how do you do that? Once you have all your objects here, each of these are separate objects. So I go up here to bodies, look at all these bodies. What you're going to do is you're going to highlight all of them. You can then right click and you, or actually you can go up here to uh, modify and you can hit combine. That will combine them and it gives you the option to make a new component. And that's what I selected because I wanted each of these to become a new component. All the bodies up here is fine, but I want to be able to come down here, select this entire component and be able to export this and do all kinds of stuff with it. So that's what I wanted. So then I went ahead and did the combine. And then we're gonna scrot here a little bit more. And then I started doing it again. And I did that one. And all I did was just move them. Now, how did I move them? Okay, whenever you copy an object, so we're gonna go ahead and 
Uh, we'll find go to my bodies here. Body one, we're gonna right click, move copy, and then we're going to it's gonna be the whole body, so we weren't kind of dealing with here, and we want it to go from point to point. So the origin point is gonna be whatever right here is close, and the target point is gonna be right here. That smacks those right together exactly where you want them. And that's the very easiest way to move components to be absolutely connected to each other. And then after you do that, you can then select them all. And again, you combine them, and here you have another piece. And once it's combined, it's a new component. When I select that component, you see it selects all those objects all together at once. Makes it really easy to do, and I find that easy. So I just did this in all the basic shapes that there were. So, and then I went ahead and just did combine, I did a whole bunch of them at once at the end here as well. So the only thing that I went ahead and changed as I, I'm gonna talk here in a minute is the four by. So I left these little holes here, these right here, I left those. Why did I do that? I don't know, I just felt like it. I could have just drawn a line on the underneath and I could extruded that up. You can do that if you want. It just, I don't know, it looked cool this way, so I left it. But for this middle one, we're gonna go all the way back to here. And once I had all those, I went ahead and created another sketch and all I did was on the bottom of this, all I did was make a square, draw the four lines, and then that gave me here, I was able to click that. Once I was able to click that, I was then able to go ahead and extrude it up. And again, I only brought it right to where the bottom of these valleys are, where the chamfers are, so that it doesn't go any higher than that. I didn't want it sticking up all the way up here, it would look funny then. And again, I just finished all my combinations and I went ahead and just applied some uh, color to them just so they would look a little bit different. Again, all of them have all four holes underneath. I did debate on removing some of them after I went through all this trouble, but I thought just for modularity, if you're using weaker magnets or you wanted to be stuck on there really well, you can put four magnets in. For me, I'm only putting in two in all of these. I'm using the outside two here, opposites here. I mean, this one I think I did three in though. I did two in here, one at the bottom, one at the top, and I did two in this one, one at each end. Again, with those neodymium magnets, they they hold so stinking well. And also, if you come back here and you already have magnets and you don't want to like go out and buy more, in this second sketch right here, you can go ahead and edit that to be as big as you need it to be. And then when you all you have to do is edit this uh, extrude, and then you can edit how deep it is. That way, so if you're using a six millimeter deep. Uh, magnet you can go ahead and extrude that to be six millimeters and you're off to the races maybe do like 6.1 that way it's absolutely flush maybe even a little recessed but it'll definitely be just in the right place so that's it now let's get back to looking at the parts so that's the i mean i just made one square and just went from there so is there a better way to do it probably is it the way that i did it yes obviously as you just watched me do a little quick tutorial on it um i don't know how quick that actually went but anyways that was it. So it only took me two iterations, surprisingly, in order to get it to fit the magnets that I wanted. Now I'm actually using a six millimeter by three millimeter magnet. Let me grab those. So what I'm actually using are these eight by three millimeter neodymium magnets. Super uber strong, keep away from children, please. So in order to keep away from children, we're gonna use a little bit of super glue, but again, this took me two iterations to finally get them to where they would fit in and they almost can fit them in with just pressure. So it's, it's really close, but I am able to get them to sink in with just pressure. And there was like, I mean, all, literally all I did was just take this, push it in and it's, it's there, it's in there. And they, they go in there just flush. A little bit of super glue, just a little dab will do ya. But also make sure that you're putting the right end in so that it's gonna to wanna to grip, otherwise it's gonna to want to repel. So you have to know which, way, which side is your north and south on your magnets. Now I did put holes in the backs of every single one of these because I just cloned the one square and put it everywhere. I did that for simplistic reasons and there's no support needed. I mean, it bridges just fine. It's a very small um, hole and it bridges over just, I mean, most of these were printed on the Prusa i3 Mark III and I did, no, actually I did all these on there because once I had one build plate, all I did was just switch filament and print again, print again, print again. It made it easier that way. So they were all printed on the Prusa i3 Mark III, which obviously can bridge without a problem. It's an amazing printer. But, uh, so you don't have to put all four in. If you do put all four in, which I did do on the blue one, especially of this four long, it sticks in there 
crazy hot. Like it's my two year old, like one and a half year old can't take it off the fridge. It's that strong. With two, it holds well enough, but it's so easy for little ones to take it off. It's kind of the whole point. I wanted to give my little ones something to throw around Something to throw in the fridge and play with something, you know, because when we're cooking dinner, you're cooking dinner for five kids, uh, for a family of seven, someone's going to be in the, in the kitchen messing with you, trying to, they want their attention, they want the love. This gives them something to do on the fridge. So again, just a little dab of the glue, of super glue in there, stick this in, pull it to the side and go. So I recommend actually leaving them together like this simply because it makes it easier to insert and then again pull to the side you don't want to pull back out but once you get that in there there's going to be glue around and pull it sideways and honestly i mean that's it so i printed uh i've got this we well, saw in the, in the fusion video so i've got this four straight i've got the little z4 piece i got the l i got the square and i got the t so you can make any size you want. You know, I'll put the, the Fusion 360 file will be on the Thingiverse page once I upload everything. And you can download the Fusion 360 file and then make your own. If you want to make a five long, a two long, anything you want, go ahead, edit it, have fun with it. The only thing I did change is that here on the four square, that center block, the center square in there doesn't get filled in because none of these corners have that filled in. So all I did was just extrude that center piece up to make it flush with the lower parts of this. And that was, I mean, this literally, I made the block in a few minutes and it seemed to work out. You know, I just did uh, chamfers on everything. I didn't do fillets just because I didn't want it to be rounded. I wanted to have more of that blocky look that you had in like classic, classic Tetris. And I think I got there. You know, uh, again, I don't claim, oh, here's my original, my secondary test piece, because this does have one magnet in there, and this is just the one single block. And I think it worked out really well. This wasn't anything mind-boggling hard. It was just me learning Fusion 360. And that's what I highly recommend everyone out there do. Do stupid little simple projects like this. Like, this is how you learn. You know, this is how I learned, oh, I can copy and move and do things and, and time. And I've designed tons of other things now in my house just by doing a little bit of design, if not every day, every week, and definitely every month. But at least once a week, I try to design something new for the house just to keep my skills up. And it doesn't always happen. It's every like two or three weeks sometimes. But you get what I mean. Basically, all I'm doing this video for is learn. Get out, go download Fusion 360. It's free to hobbyists, so download it and get designing because there is nothing more fulfilling than designing something in 3D in a 3D CAD software, 3D printing it, and it works. And again, this only took me two iterations, which for me is pretty good because other previous things I've designed took like eight. Like when I did stuff for the laser thing, that took like eight or 10 iterations for me to get that just right. So I'm getting a lot better at it. It's taken two years. But I'm getting better at it. So that's kind of what I want to leave at this video. So if you guys enjoyed this project, I hope you did. It was a fun little thing. But give the video a thumbs up. If you didn't, thumbs down. Talk in the comments down below. Let me know what happened. You should always love my videos. That's how it goes here. If you guys want to support me, help me do projects like this, fun things, best thing to do, become a patron. Down below is a Patreon link. Donate me a dollar more. I appreciate it. And you guys get access to my after show and the Patreon feed while you're a patron. So I thank you guys for that. Of course, my current patrons, you guys are awesome. Other ways you can support me, there's some one-time links down below. And you can also use any of the fill links down below. I have lots of links down there for filaments. And there's lots of discount codes down there as well. Zoltec is 15% off. Not a bad deal for some PLA filament. And that applies on everything, all filaments in their store, actually. PETs, ABS, specialty filaments, all that jazz. So make sure you check those out. And a little slice of what you buy, and they'll come back here to help me with the channel. I thank you guys for watching. Until next time, happy printing.